hey you and welcome. My name is Mike and in this whole video, we're gonna look at the case of Sadie Hartley. Sadie was a 60 year old woman who lived in Lancashire, England, who was the victim of an attack by two women. The reason? Why love? What else? Not love for her though, love for her partner. Yeah, tis uh, one of those. The old, you know, murder your ex's partner so that they'll get back with you fiasco that never ever ends well so don't get any ideas. What's absolutely fascinating in this case is the police investigation however, how they tracked the two women responsible and the footage they analysed. Not that you really need to analyse the moment one was arrested in bed. Speaks for itself. Alright, let's learn some murder. <laughs> Thirty-five-year-old Sarah Williams had a brief relationship with a 57-year-old ex-firefighter Ian Johnston, which he ended when he said she became possessive and difficult. Sarah, uh, you know, at the time she was in that brief relationship with Ian, she was actually in a long-term relationship with a 75-year-old sugar daddy, He's twice her uh, age, over twice her age. And, you know, when Ian ended it, she became what's called a bunny boiler, which is a term I've honestly never heard of before. A woman who acts vengefully after having been spurned by her lover. I think we've come across a few of those. Cool term though, I'm gonna use it. Remind me. She actually had a number of flings with other men while she was with this sugar daddy, Ian being one of them obviously, but it was Ian who really set her off. After dumping her, he began seeing 60-year-old communications director and mother of two, Sadie Hartley. However, little did he know that for over a year and a half, Sarah, who was, you know, not used to somebody saying no, no, no to her, began plotting how to get him back. And after all that time, she landed on murder. She probably should have thought a little harder. At one point in June 2014, she, Sarah Williams, wrote her rival for Ian's affections, Sadie Hartley, a letter, claiming that her and Ian were having unbelievably fantastic sex behind her back. The best he's ever had by a really, really long time. We've never been able to get enough of each other. It satisfies a need in him, which he'll never really be able to suppress or manage without. So like, why are you even bothering? By his own admission, Ian is not in love with you. Never has been, never will be. Whew. That letter didn't work on Sadie. Damn, back to the drawing board. So then she just straight up planned her death. Sadie's death. Sarah and her best friend of many years and accomplice in all that would come, Katrina Kit Walsh, yikes, then traveled to Germany to buy a cattle prod in December 2015, which are illegal in the UK, thinking this'll come in handy when they go pay her a visit. They also bought clothes and larger sized boots to cover their tracks. And see, even though Ian Johnston had ended it with Sarah, he was with Sadie, right up until, well, what happened, he continued to exchange flirtatious text messages and explicit photographs with Sarah. Maybe even leading Sarah on, just the, just the titch, just the tad. And that's why Johnston shouldn't have thought what is Johnson. What was he thinking? She's crazy. And Katrina actually kept a diary of the whole murder plot thing, writing down everything that was happening. Why? She would scribble in her diary her excitement at plotting the perfect murder. In one entry, 17 months before the murder, she wrote, Sarah came round, so got caught up in endless murder plots for Ian's other half later continuing, seriously talking of getting rid of her opponent. She does seem like a totally evil bitch. Wow, I may get to be instrumental in helping remove the awful woman. This may happen. Wow. I'm unexpectedly excited by it. Was buzzing so much I needed a southern comfort to wind down a bit. She also debated using the flag of ISIS in the murder to mislead the investigation. Wow. Writing, I have no moral qualms, just a serious don't let us get caught twinge. Well, spoiler alert, she got more than that twinge. 
Then, exactly a week before the murder, Sarah's accomplice, Katrina, actually went to Sadie's house to deliver flowers. This was a dry run of their murder plot. Sarah was with her at the time, watching her from the bushes with binoculars, like a creep. Sadie would later tell a friend it was weird that she got just random flowers sent by some anonymous person. Uh, she never reported it to the police though, like why would you, I guess. Hey, you're on the flares, thanks. On the night of January 14th, 2016, Sadie was at home in her house in Helmshore, Lancashire, just having returned from stables where she rode her horse. Ian Johnston was away at the time, in Switzerland, on a skiing trip. At about 8pm that night, Sadie answered the door, and both Sarah and Katrina paralyzed Sadie with a 500,000 volt cattle prod and then stabbed her to death. It was described as an orgy of violence. She was stabbed over 40 times. Yeah, this'll win Ian back for sure. Katrina then helped hide the evidence. The knife and the stun gun at the stables where she worked. Uh, buried in animal shit, if you can believe it. Actually, I'm just wondering whether you'd be able to do a check on my boss's address. We've not heard from her for over 24 hours. Her name is Sadie Hartley. The next day, that evening, the police were called by an employee of Sadie's who hadn't heard from her, you know, at all that day, and, and that was strange. And so the police rocked up to Sadie's home and found the gruesome scene in Sadie's hallway. There was no sign of a forced entry and a major investigation was launched. Police going door to door, you know, with inquiries. Was it a random attack? Burglary gone wrong? I mean, that's what the police were thinking, because I already told you what happened. Police then gathered CCTV from Sadie's street and saw a car parking nearby at about 8pm the night Sadie was murdered. Ian was quickly brought in. Now, obviously, he was away in Switzerland at the time, so he was ruled out as a suspect. But he did tell the police about a woman he knew, who was maybe a little bit possessive, maybe wouldn't take no for an answer. He told the police about a strange visit Sadie had received a week before, a random bouquet of flowers. Suspicion then quickly fell on Sarah Williams, the spurned ex-lover of Ian Johnston, and the police were able to get a hold of her phone records and found out that she was in the area at the time those flowers were delivered. It was a crisp, cool January morning in the northwest of England. Birds were chirping, doing their thing. The Sandman had come and given Sarah Williams a visit. She was fast asleep, counting sheep. But she was about to be rather rudely awakened. Sarah Williams was arrested at her home in the city of Chester, about an hour away from Sadie's. They got to her at 3am on the 17th of January, a little over a week after the murder. Right After searching Sarah's home, they didn't find anything, you know, any evidence directly linking her to the murder. But what they did notice was a strong smell of bleach. This led the police to do a more thorough search and they found minute traces of blood in Sarah's bath. Sadie's blood. But the police didn't know who the second person in that flower delivery footage was. No idea. They had the footage of Sarah buying the flowers and you know, being there when they were delivered, but didn't know who she was with. So then the police spoke to a neighbor who saw them delivering the flowers that night, a week before Sadie was murdered, and said she saw a woman who she identified as Sarah Williams with a bald man. And the police discovered Sarah had a tremendous friendship with an older woman, Katrina Walsh. The police paid her a visit and noticed Katrina had alopecia. Sarah's friend and murder buddy Katrina was arrested the next day. Both were charged with murder. But the arrests were just the beginning. See, the police had a long way to go in figuring out what the shit happened and what led to what happened. But thanks to old CCTV footage, mobile phone analysis, and vehicle tracking, they learned what preceded 
Sadie Hartley's murder. When grilled, Sarah remained cool and calm, collected, until the police told her her phone was placed at the scene and that they had footage of her leaving the area of Sadie's house the night of the murder. And they learned Sarah had purchased the car scene in the CCTV footage in cash from a dealership. Sarah then used the old no comment routine. First thing I'm going to ask you, Sarah, is are you responsible for the death of Sadie Hartley? Definitely not. Definitely not. 14th of January yeah. this year. Thursday just gone. Yeah. Where were you? I was at home in Chester. Well, I got home at, I think, about four. Um, I'd been sent home from work with sickness. Four. Yeah. 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 Met him. Started skiing on March 11th. So I met him at some point during that year. That carried on until we fell out in the August 2014. Something like that. Um, but yeah, he basically felt that I was too plain being too needy. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. I'd say I'm not. And then I wrote Sadie a letter, tell her everything that happened. She rang me up, had a go at me. Obviously, I would expect. I wasn't at all happy. Went to his house, we had, a, we had a, an enormous row. Well, for Aunt um, Sadie. Were you, were you jealous of her? No. The way I saw it is, you know, he's. He's quite happy to spend 12 months cheating on her and messing her about and talking about leaving. You know, it's not something to be jealous of. I didn't see if they had like a great relationship. What I'm going to show you next there is CCTV from Stone Bank Road and it shows two figures with a bunch of flowers were walking down the road towards Sadie's house. Have you and Kit gone there to check it's the right house? No problem. Why did you send Kit to the door? Katrina, she said, Oh, my old brain, I had too many horse riding accidents. I can't remember what happened. It was discovered that the pair had bought a tracker, which they placed on Ian's car, so they could learn the location of Sadie's home. Sarah had done this when Ian and Sadie went to a Christmas party at an indoor ski slope where Sarah worked as a holiday sales rep. Sarah and Katrina then carried out a number of reconnaissance missions to scope out the area, stalking Ian and Sadie and used a second-hand car with false number plates, the tree turned into an eight with tape, to try and cover their tracks. And the police learned of their entire Deutschland trip. Finally, Katrina Walsh, trying to, trying to save her own skin, comes completely clean. What evidence is it that you've hidden? I've hidden a zapper, a knife, the soles of some boots. Tell me what a zapper is. It's it's a black thing with with, with with a squeezy squeezy and it's got prongs and it makes a horrible crackly 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 noise. The next item on this list, what does that say? Not a knife. Right, tell me about that. It's a knife. What the fuck's a knife? And I I suspect I sus at the time at the time I suspected it's killed somebody. Okay, why do you suspect that? Because I've been told to destroy it. Who by? Sarah. She got in my car and gave me bags with instructions to burn the clothes and the towels and everything and utterly destroy everything else. I, 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 I opened the, open the bag. I opened the bag. Uh, that. <laughs> that down, down. Come on. Come on. She's done it. She's, 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 she's done it. She's done it. She's done what? She's, she's, she's killed somebody. She's killed somebody. How do you know that? There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a knife and 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 the zapper and and. and I, I've got evidence. I've got evidence. Why has she trusted you to get rid of the evidence? If you're not involved in this, why has she trusted you? She wants to frame me for it. She wants to frame me for it or kill me and frame me for it. At that stage, that's all I can think. Why don't you walk into a police station and speak to the police? Because whenever I was in that, whenever I was that frightened, I was more frightened of her than anything else. I... Okay. Sadly, Piet, it shouldn't be me that you're sorry to. But I, oh, no, I'm, I'm very, very deeply... <laughs> But you shouldn't be sorry to me. No, I'm deeply sorry. I, I, I mean, that's that's the that, oh.
some augment a car key under those under those parts. Uh, you pointed then and you said now. Show me where you pointed to. So where this horse, horse poo, poo is, because I've put the horse poo on top so uh, so that I could Right. Then you said to me, Zapper, where's the Zapper? In the under under, under so, this uh, 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 some here. somewhere in that. It was then that Katrina Walsh's diary entries were discovered. Because that was such a great idea. Yeah, Sarah wrote that too. The trial, with all the footage, data, horse shit covered evidence, Katrina's dream journal, and admissions the prosecution had, was pretty open and shut. In August 2016, both Sarah Williams and Katrina Walsh were found guilty of murder and sentenced to life. Sarah ordered to serve a minimum of 30 years in prison, Katrina, 25 years. Molly was a thoroughly decent, honest lady who was totally innocent of any wrongdoing whatsoever. The murder in her, in her, in her own home can only be described as a premeditated, brutal and senseless act committed against a defenceless lady who was home alone at the time. Albeit Williams may have been the one that wielded the knife on this evening, there can be no doubt that Katrina Walsh was also heavily involved in this dreadful, dreadful crime. I would like to take this opportunity to pay a number of thanks. Firstly, I would like to thank the jury for their careful consideration and deliberation over the last seven weeks. I am firmly of the opinion that they have re reached a, an absolutely correct verdict. I'd also like to thank the prosecuting team who have also worked extremely tirelessly to achieve some justice for Sadie and her family. I'd also like to pay thanks to the community of Helmshaw, who are incredibly patient with my colleagues as they work tirelessly to uncover what has happened on the evening of the Thursday, uh, sorry, Thursday the uh, 14th of January. And finally, I would like to pay tribute and thank the friends and family of Sadie Hartley, who have behaved with absolute dignity throughout the last eight months and have had to endure what I can only describe as a terrible, terrible period in their lives. It is, indeed, it's been an absolute privilege to serve them, and it's been a privilege to secure this justice for Sadie and the friends of family of Sadie. I've, I've spent eight months now, every day, questioning my motives of, 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 of why I, I texted Sarah back. Some people may feel that that was, made me culpable in that texting Sarah in some way has, has led to Sarah murdering Sadie. I'm, I'm told that this planning of this murder was 17, 18 months ago. If people feel that in some way I've, I've let them down, that um, I am responsible by texting, I am I'm profoundly sorry for that and I'll regret it forever. <laughs> Boat locked up. At one point, Katrina actually feared that Sarah might try and frame her for the murder. Uh, yeah, see, Katrina had a shellfish allergy, so she suspected that Sarah was going to put prawns in her food and then hide her EpiPens. And then when Katrina died of, you know, her allergy or whatever, her shock, um, Sarah would then write a suicide note, put it on Katrina's body, and, you know, say she was responsible for everything. What a plan. Katrina actually said, yeah, I think this is going to happen, but they both got arrested before it could. So, was Katrina a willing accomplice or forced into it, as she said? Well, her diary certainly paints one angle of that picture. Unfortunately for her, there's no southern comfort in prison. What a story. It's like a, you know, James... Bond, Jason Bourne style plot, spy, shit, whatever, uh, if, if both spies were completely dumbasses. During the sentencing, the judge said that Sadie Hartley died for their amusement, and it definitely seems like the pair of them really got off on their little, you know, spy novel come to life that ultimately ended poor Sadie's life. Well, I guess it ended their own too. 30 years ain't nothing to sniff at. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will see you, as always, real soon in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Mike out.